What's going on people, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another review. First off, I want to apologise that this hasn't come out a lot quicker after the Chelsea Watford game. Uh, we were doing a lot of filming after that, doing Zoom fan cams, doing reviews as well for Blues Fans TV. Also, if you haven't checked out that channel, which you probably have if you've already seen me on this one, check out Blues Fans TV. We've just hit 100k, the road to 200k starts now. Big achievement for us, but we can never sit and just rest on that. We're always looking to build ourselves and continue to grow forward. So if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It's Chelsea 3, Watford 0, and easiest game out of the lockdown for us by a mile. I mean, if you look at the level of competitiveness from the Villa game, the Man City game, Leicester, Leicester even, even though that game didn't really have much talking points, and the West Ham game that we lost, this game was the most comfortable out of all. Out of all of them by a mile all that was necessary was that we got the first goal because Watford just came in and they were happy to draw the game in fact I think they came in with just damage limitation in mind because they even at two or three nil down they didn't really try to attack us that much they didn't really change their mindset or their style of play they were just continuing to try and drive no they were just continuing to sit back and just play a more patient game and I understand that that start of the game i mean that's how most of the teams in the lower half of the table have beaten us they like to sit deep they like to hold on to that low block they like to make it hard for us in the final third and they like to try and capitalize on our mistakes and our frustrations but we were very lucky to get the early goal um brilliant link up play between mason mount and ross barkley and a great assist from ross barkley to olivier Giroud to make it one nil which broke the deadlock for us and that was so vital i know it sounds like the deadest michael owen comment going saying we needed to score one nil just to win the game yeah i get that but the point still stands regardless if the longer the game went without us scoring the more frustrating that game would have become for us because watford would have started to grow in confidence and start to think maybe they can even nick something out of the game and maybe run away with all three points it wouldn't be that hard to predict because it's happened so many times to us this season which is why i'm very happy with how comfortable this game was it seemed very easy for us as soon I won't say at 1-0 it became easy for us because Watford was still trying to do the same thing from 1-0 down and we were still having the same levels of frustration. N'Golo Kante was playing again in the DM role and defensively I think he was just as solid as he always was but I think when it comes to him in that position what a lot of people are worried about is his passing going forward and especially against teams that are going to sit deep against us because they're just going to give you less space to get those passes into. But N'Golo Kante understood that and he started taking less risky passes as the game progressed and I think his game management was pretty good. Um, who else should we talk about? I think Reese James, he started the game pretty slowly and it was very interesting to see him come back into the starting lineup because he hasn't really taken to playing football well since he's come back from lockdown. Uh, the Villa game, he looked very off the pace and I'd say the same thing for the Leicester City game as well. But we were all asking for a change in the lineup defensively after that West Ham game and credit to Frank Lampard, he's ruthless as hell and it showed down that lineup there was three changes defensively. I wouldn't say f no two changes defensively and as Equator got moved from the right side in into the left side and he did pretty well he had four key passes in that game and you got you can't underestimate how hard it is for a right footed player to play a left back and as Equator has always been filling in in that position he was a lot more solid down the Jose Mourinho but we played a much more defensive style of play there as Equator for however much he struggled because we know how much he struggled at fullback ever since we got rid of Conte and we've played a much more attacking style of play I think he's just been solid so it's been a good performance from him defensively and I think for the whole defence it looked a lot more solid compared to the West Ham game Zuma came back and he was he was so much better uh, what was it uh, Set, the presence he has for set pieces and corners is unmatched compared to Antonio Rudiger and also the calmness he has I get playing out the back you can put a little bit of pressure on him and scare him a little bit but he loves those recovery tackles he loves trying to get back he love he the difference between him and Rudiger is he can actually keep a fixed head on Rudiger's a lot more rash than Kurt Zuma was so it felt a lot more safer having him in the defensive line <laughs> Um, Pulisic, yet again, man of the match, and he didn't get a goal today, but he was so hard to stop, and he had to try and drop a bit more deeper to collect the ball, but whenever he did, as soon as he started building a bit of pace behind him, it became impossible to stop. Those turns he does as well. He's so hard to stop when he starts getting in momentum. And you can't even tell whether he's trying to go left or right anymore because of how quickly he does it. And Kapue figured that out as well for the penalty he conceded for the second goal. All in all... 
good performance from us and it was a result that was very much needed because uh, what was it? Leicester City had just won the get won as well as Manchester United going into that game, and we we're out of the top four for the first time in months. Coming up towards that Watford game, so a result was so key for us. We need to start keeping pace because this run in towards the end of the season is going to be so hard. And even the last game of the season, because Leicester and are facing Manchester United, don't expect that to be easy either because we got Wolves as well. This race for top four is going straight to the wire, and. I'm not going to lie, we could have been a lot more consistent this season, but we expected a lot worse from ourselves. So to even be in the top four race, we shouldn't be too ungrateful about it. But you also do need to understand, if we were a bit more consistent, we'd probably be in a race for second place. If we're a bit more consistent at home, or if we were just a bit more consistent in general, our, home, our away record's been better than our home record. Or if we'd just beaten a couple teams who are in the lower half of the table. Hell, if we just beaten West Ham once, we'd be third. Which kind of just says it all, to be honest. But we're going to go straight into the player ratings. Kepa in goal. Um, He didn't really have much to do, to be honest. He had a pretty decent save from Danny Welbeck. I will say decent, because I overhyped that a lot on the live stream but it's only because I still believe in Kepa and I think he's got a lot of unnecessary stick but he didn't have much to do for the game uh distribution was a lot better than it was in the West Ham game but he didn't really have much to do I'm just gonna give him a six and just leave it at that uh Reese James started the game very slowly and he didn't look very confident had a lot of misplaced passes and a couple wasteful crosses as well but as he started to build towards the second half, he started to grow more and more into his into the game. His crosses started becoming a lot more dangerous. I think he was very unlucky not to get an assist towards the end of the game. He had a great cross for, uh, who was it, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. And I just don't think he angled himself pretty right on the header. But he grew into the game and it was a very promising performance from Reese James. So I'm going to give him a 7. Um, Andreas Christensen. Not the strongest, but I think he handled Troy Deeney well. Even though, I say strength, everyone's just going to talk about when Danny Welbeck absolutely skinned him. Bar that one moment, I think he had a very solid performance. Uh, what was it? He won six out of his eight duels, I think. And he had a 93% passing accuracy as well. So his stats were still pretty good today. And it was a much more promising performance in the West Ham game. So I'm going to give him a 7. Uh, Kurt Zuma, I'm going to give him a 9. He won 6 out of his 8 duels. So that was the wrong stat. That one was for Kurt Zuma. Uh, kept very tight to Troy Deeney as well. And like I said before, for set pieces, he is such an asset defensively and offensively. And his jumping is such a key trait to his game. So I'm going to give him a 7. Um, as for Equator, like I said, four key passes in the game. It's very hard to play on the on the left-handed side for a right-footed player. And even then, I thought he was very defensively solid. And Mr. he's Mr. Reliable, as we all like to call him. Four key passes. And he even got the assist for Ross Barkley towards the end. And his, and his passing into the box has really improved since the turn of lockdown. So I'm going to give him a seven as well. And Golo Kante, I thought he was brilliant as well defensively. Like I said previously, his passing range wasn't really all that good. And it's an area that he needs to improve. But he's adapting to a new position. He, has, he hasn't really played as a lone DM in years. As much as everyone's saying he is a DM and he's played in that position for years. They're chatting out their bollocks. He's been a ball carrier for years. He has got the attributes to play as a defensive midfielder though. And I think in time he's going to adapt more to this position. Um... I like the fact that his game management was good and I thought his, he started becoming a lot more safer with his passing because he was realising he was being a lot more uh, rash with those long balls. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to give him a 7. Ross Barkley, this guy, man, I, I really don't know what to describe him because he has two or three great moments in the game and other than that, it's just dreadful. Um, I thought he had bad decision making bar the two or three key moments but he still got a good goal and an assist so I'm not going to try and delve too deeply into negative aspects of his game I do think he could have had a bit more influence but he still carried the ball pretty well and you know what he got a goal and an assist and he's looking in pretty decent form so I don't want to sound too negative Ross Barkley I'm going to give a 7 uh, Mason Mount I'm going to give an 8 I thought he was reliable as always in winning back the ball I've said before how the team's press relies on him, especially in the attacking part, in the attacking area of the pitch. Um, his his build up for the first goal as well. I think he was the guy that set up Ross Barkley for the assist, and he's been a key player for us in the midfield. So um, Mason Mount, I'm going to give an eight. 
Uh, Loftus Cheek missed that header off the Reese James cross, but him getting into position is good enough for me. Like I said with Loftus Cheek, it's going to be a very slow return back to form for him. It's going to be very similar to Callum Hudson Odoi when he was re recovering from his Achilles injury. So you just need to be patient with him. But he's starting to become more confident. He's starting to get into more of those positions. So. I can't really complain too much. With Ruben Loftus-Cheek, I really don't mind if we don't see much in terms of output from him this season. I just want to see him get more confident and start getting more confident in himself and in his game. Because coming off an Achilles injury is going to be hard for him. So Ruben, I'm going to give a 6. Uh, Billy Gilmore, 6 as well. I thought his first touch and his movement was pretty good. Defensively, he could improve, but he won't on the pitch for that long. So I'm just going to leave it as a 6. Uh, William, I'm going to give a 7-2. I thought he carried the ball pretty well. Got another goal off the set piece as well, but people are really overhyping themselves if they say we need to sign William to another contract. Seriously, you lot need to start raising your standards. He has scored a lot of goals this season, but he has scored two goals from open play this season as well. Let's be real, I think all of his goals coming back from lockdown have been through set pieces. And I'm not saying he, he, he's been a bad player since we've come back. He's been one of our best players and probably been one of our be better players this season. But if you really think you should be getting a two-year contract, you need to start looking at yourself. William, I'm going to give a uh, seven. Seven. I don't think he had a bad performance today. Um, Olivier Giroud. Bruv, I tell, I tell you about this guy and how he makes the players around him better. He's arguably the best target man in the world. And I think Eden Hazard hallowed those words as well a year ago. Um, he bullies centre-backs in a way that Tammy Abraham can't. And his link-up play was very important for us today. And he got a goal today as well. So it's a good performance. I'm going to give Giroud an 8. Pulisic, 9. Man of the match again. And I told you about this guy's skill and ability on the ball. And how hard it is to get the ball off him. I like how smart he was that he had to drop deep to receive the ball. And he was still able to become a threat. He was giving those Watford defenders nightmares for ages. Kapue still has got nightmares about this guy. Christian Pulisic gets a 9. Man of the match. Um, Hudson Odoi. Not going to give a rating. I don't think he did much in the game. He don't, I don't think he had a lot of impact, but he was just getting back to fitness. I think that was his first game back since lockdown. Tammy Abraham as well needs to start applying himself more in games. He doesn't look confident and we need to start seeing something from him sooner, sooner rather than later because Lampard is ruthless and... Timo Werner is literally in the door and I know that's going to be hanging off the back of Tammy's head but he needs to put that in the back of his head and start focusing on, on his game because they can both still play together but we need to see the old Tammy Abraham back soon because he's not shown a lot of impact in games so I'm not going to give him a rating either. Guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my ratings or any of my points. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. Let me know what other pieces of content you want to see because games are going thick and fast and all I'm really doing is previews and reviews. If there's something different you guys want to see let me know. Take care. I'll see you soon. Up the Chelsea.